if your dad worked out at the mill, then you know you could easily get on spare board. But that same connection didn't stand out at the mine when I worked there. There wasn't that many jobs. There was no spare board. So if you got on permanently at the mine, it's because you've taken some sort of education or you're in the right place at the right time. And to look at the generations of families that have worked out there, the Mays, the Kretschmeyers, um, the Hartles, um, all three boys worked out at the mine at one time. Um, their dad worked out there. Number two on the union payroll, Amadeo Russo, his son is currently working out there as a cage tender. My name is Amadeo Russo, and I worked in Mitre Fall for 43 years. I came from Italy with a wife and four kids, and I need a job. Professional job back home he used to be a barber. So I started working there and I lost there for 43 years. My name is Frank Maga and I've been in Campbell River for 36 years. Born in Estuary, Saskatchewan, grew up on the prairies and got my uh, carpenter's ticket while I was in Saskatchewan after doing a bit of work in Ontario in a mine there doing timbering, then went hard rock mining. And then Lake Manitoba, for 15 and a half years, and then when that mine shut down, it was mined out. They moved here to Campbell River, and this is where I retired. A final job here would be a barber for the yard and hard to feed the four kids. So I started working the mine. I never seen mine in my life. The guys could start work right after, right out of high school. They didn't have any waiting period. Like where I came from, they had a two year waiting period, I think. They wouldn't hire them right out of high school because the parents thought that was influencing their education. They'd rather see them get an education. So the mind said, okay, we won't hire them for two years. But here they're right straight out of high school. And so, yeah, there's a lot of father-son working at the mine here. Who do you blast or cross shift the blast? Depends, you know, what's your... When you blast, when they told us we should possibly hit the ore, so I take scaling bar, I mean, the first thing you take to lose down. But then when I take the one piece of loose over there, another one that come from there, coming down my head, right on top of my legs. I was in conversation for, for a while, but maybe 20 months. Every mine has, a, has either a breakdown of the cage or something happens in the shaft or, or hydro, power or something, so you can't get up, but there's always an escape way. But nobody wants to climb 2,000 or 3,000 feet up ladders, and you go up a ladder and then a landing, then another ladder, and it's usually wet in the shaft, and so it's better if you can stay put. And if you have an extra sandwich, that's great too, you know. But I think the longest we were down, or I was down, was for seven hours, I think, seven or eight hours. And then we had refuge stations that we called lunchrooms or refuge stations, and they were all throughout the mine in various places. So they were put in place so that people could have a safe place to go to if in a situation like that. Or let's say there was a, a cave-in or something and you couldn't get from where you were until somebody came and dug you out, then usually there was a refuge station there to, that you could go to. So basically, it's just sat, hung out, and didn't do anything. You try to conserve your energy because you don't know how long you're going to be there. So you find a nice place and you lay down or whatever and in the refuge station, just wait it out. They had phones in the refuge stations too, most of them. So somebody would call and say when it was time to come out or somebody would come knocking on the door and say, okay, let's go. They say, well, that's it, a few, few more years, we're done, we're finished. And like I said, well, now we are 2023, we're still going. I uh, saw ad in the paper for Myra Falls operation, and I knew our mine was shutting down pretty soon in Lynn Lake. So I applied for a job here. And then when I went back, 
I was only back in Lynn Lake for a couple of weeks and got a phone call from personnel saying that they liked what they read and that when can I start? I said, well, what do you mean when can I start? And she said, well, we got brand new equipment here, brand new jumbos and all that. And can you start right away? And I said, well, not quite right away, but in two weeks I'll be able to start because I'm going to give two weeks notice. So when I started at Meyer Falls, I started as a jumbo operator. And then I did graduate to a three-boom jumbo. After that, I got put in a different stope. So I was doing the training for the younger guys that are just starting to mine. And then from there, I was promoted to mine captain. And then that's where I was when I took a buyout. I loved the job. I did it for so many years. But for me, you know, go to quit there, go to work another mine, for me, it wasn't worth it. Because at least I got here for my wife and four kids. Uh, you're going to go like a lot, of, a lot of friends of mine I know. They go up in north, they go in Africa, I go here. I, I never want to go anywhere. I'm okay where I am. But this is my, my town, my own town for me. I lived here for 52 years. I came here when I was 25. So I, uh, do, do, I doubled my life here in Cambo River. He was working here in Camo River when he finished high school. And he, he said, uh, I said, go, decide to do something, you know, the, go to school, what do you want to do? And he said, Dad, I want to take it a year off. So he started working in the river lumber. <clears throat> After that, he find other guys and he used to drive the truck and uh, backhole and all the machinery. So he started to love it, make good money for him. And for the school, forget it. Then the guys went broke, the river lumber shut down, and they said, I asked, I said, what are you going to do now? He said, I want to go back into school. Well, what do you want to do? And he said, I want to be a mechanic. He was working at Fruits, the boundary, the big Honda dealer there. So he worked there for, I don't know, 10, 12 years. Then his wife passed away. And he decided to say, Dad, I want to come back home. I said, you got a nice house in Vancouver. He used to live in Coquitlam. I said, you got a nice house there. Why, why do you want to come come over here for? Like a small agent come over here. It's not like in Vancouver. And he said, no, I don't want to come back home. He decided to say, why not ask if I can come and work with you up there? And I asked him, my boss. So he came in there in the morning with me, and next morning he started working. Now it's pretty close to 10 years he worked there now. Most of my friends were Sircona, Sircona Park. Yeah. Uh, when I started 1972, it wasn't just a gravel road. Who made the road there? The mine. When the river reached the bridge, you go up in the walking because they fix real beautiful. You can go Mitchell Lake, you can go everywhere. This all mine fix that, all the mine they that. And the way is in the mine, I know it's in a park. I agree with that. But there was no road there. The road, who did the road? They did the mine. Now people can drive all the way, the pavement road, they can drive anywhere you want, anywhere they want, right to the mine, everywhere. But before there was nothing there. So there were definitely individuals who didn't want mining in the park. And there are everywhere, not just in Strathcona Park, but everywhere in the world. <laughs> they don't want mining, right? So, and yeah, if, if employees of Westman ever had a chance to help out at the park, at the lodge, then we definitely would, because there was no, no hatred or anything there or nothing, no animosity that I know of, except with a few individuals who wanted it stopped. What is, what happened is, first fire, it was right where we used to have all the timbers, all, all the material we used to take, ship them underground. And it was in the 75, 76, and something like that. 
and we put them out, and we was spent 24 hours a day. One crew go in, one crew go out. Then another time was Lane Highway, when he goes to the mine. Some, somebody, I think, start the fire. And people was go to work, it change, and go fight the fire. But these people, when they talk, for me, I told the truth, not because I worked there so many years. That road was not even there. People didn't even know where the mine was. They didn't even know where the, that up, up there was a park. They don't know nothing. Now they come out, like say, it doesn't matter, people have to complain. Doesn't matter what. Maybe they are right, maybe I'm wrong. But like me, I'm, I worked, like I said, 43 years, I never see anything. When something a road, they try to fix as soon as they can. And no, no, because they live in here in Cambria River too. They don't leave somebody else. It's good for people to know what was what was here and what still is here. Lots of them don't even know there's a mine out there. And so, it is good. This educational thing. And nice for everybody to know what's what's happening and how this town was built, because that was part of the industry it was built on mining and and the pulp mill and fishing. 1978, we went all the family. We went back home because I started to make money in the mine and they save a few dollars. Because we want to go back. When we went there, everything was different. I said, let's go home. Let's, I call it here, come to home. A hole, when you work in a hole, you know, down on the ground, it doesn't matter what hole you go, this is all the same. And the only thing you can see is the light in front of you, that's all. 